Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, back over here at the Xbox 360 because we're going to be covering yet another emulator, but something I haven't covered here at all here on the channel. This here is going to be covering MAME 360, which in case you do not know, is an arcade emulator so you can play, well, arcade games on your modified Xbox 360. Now, I've been covering a few of these emulators here recently, and not necessarily because they're new, but more because there's a few new people to the Xbox 360 homebrew scene, thanks to Bad Update. Additionally, these are some emulators that I've been asked to cover throughout the years just to set them up and do all that other fun stuff. So we've covered the PS1 emulator, the Super Nintendo emulator, so arcade games will have some fun with that. Now, another fun thing here, and a little bit of a shout out and thanks, is that this emulator, much like SNES 360, was actually developed and released years ago by Modern Vintage Gamer, a really great YouTuber and friend of the show over here, so it'll be cool to cover this, and of course, again, thanking him for really getting this ported over to the 360 and letting us all have some fun with it. Now, you are going to need a few things to get started here. First of all, you are going to need your Xbox 360, and it must be modified to be able to run Homebrew. That means you'll need a JTAG, a RGH, or even a bad update-enabled system. Really, some kind of system that will let you play unsigned code, run custom dashboards like this, and of course play through some emulators such as, well, SNES 360 right here. We're also going to be using a USB drive for this, and I'm going to be doing that just to easily transfer over the emulator, but you're going to need a computer for that to download this, get it set up, and get your games there as well too. Now just like before, I'll cover this here real quick. If you want to, you can go into your scripts, and if you have a network enabled on your system using Aurora, you can go into the homebrew store, and you can actually just download the emulator itself from the emulators section. It will be MAME 0.72 that we're going to be installing, however, I am still going to be covering this mainly on the computer because even though you could download the emulator here and that's totally fine, just do keep in mind that you are still going to need to bring your games over. And I've got the games I want to install over on my computer, so we're going to be using that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and leave the Xbox here, keep it running, but I'm going to go over to my computer with a USB drive and show you all what to do. Now, just like before, I'm going to have linked down below in the description, and I'm going to recommend the emulator section over on the console mods wiki. You can go ahead and scroll down to the list of emulators, and the one we're going to be looking for is, of course, MAME360. This one right here. You can go ahead and click this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now, if you don't have a way of extracting that archive, you can go ahead and download and install 7-zip. It's easy, it's free, and it should get the job sorted. Now to set this up, you're going to need your archive downloaded, and you're also going to need to bring your own games or ROMs. I'm not going to be covering that here, that's going to be on you to bring them, but one thing I can show you all, at least, is if you are going to be bringing some of your arcade ROMs over, just keep in mind that they're probably going to be a little different if you haven't messed with these compared to other ROMs, where typically you might have a ROM file itself. This one here is going to be set up as archives, so Outrun, for example, if you check this out, out is a series of files right here, but you do not want to extract these out. Each game is going to stay in its own zip file. You do not extract them out, you just copy them as is. Just keep that in mind. Either way, we can close out of here, and let's go ahead and get this extracted. Find your MAME archive, right click this, use something such as 7-zip, and extract it into its own folder. It should bring up a new folder right here, and we can go ahead and rename it to make it look a little nicer by right clicking and hitting rename. This one here, I'm going to change mine to MAME360, just because that's what I'm picking here. You can pick whatever you want to for that folder name, but within the folder itself, you're going to have several folders and a few files right here. Just to get this cleaned up a little bit and to save some space, there's actually a archive of this within here. So if you'd like to save a bit of space and you don't want the source code itself sitting on the 360, you can get rid of this if you want to here. To me, having the source code here is wonderful, but there's no reason to have it on the actual console itself since we can't use it there. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. As for the actual executable itself, you can go ahead and right click this. And if you want to integrate it into Aurora or anything else later, you can rename this here to default. So it should look like default.xex. If you're not seeing the file name extensions here, within Windows, you can click on View, 
show and make sure file name extensions has been enabled. Now there will be a couple of text files that I recommend checking out. The first one is going to be the MAME text file and this one is good because it shows what has been happening within these releases, some of the features here, the usage itself, so where you want to put your games, where they can be found, as well as the controls here which I will be covering once we get further into the video. So you can go ahead and keep this on the side if you wish to. The second one here is going to be this MAME 72 release 11 2024 odds and ends readme. This one here is worth stating because this is a little bit of an unofficial update. They state here that this update is to release 2 which was originally coded by Lantis or MVG but this update is by Arcades and compiled by Wolf 3S. So there are a few new games that are supported, a few games that are fixed and playable, a few more games with graphical improvements. So it is worth giving these here a quick read. Either way once once we have that tweaked a bit, we can close out of here and you can go ahead and grab your emulator folder itself. It should just be MAME360 or whatever you've called it. Right click and copy it out. Now go ahead, plug in your USB drive if you haven't already. Make sure it is FAT32 in file system so it should work on the Xbox 360. And within the USB drive, you can go ahead and paste this wherever you want to. I'm personally just pasting it to the root here because I'm going to be copying it over later. And once that's copied over, we have the emulator itself, but we do need to bring our ROM files over. So for this, I'll go ahead and keep this open. I'm going to go over to my games section, and these are the games that I've chosen to copy over. Again, you do not want to extract out the zip files. If your games are like this, just keep them as is within these archives. But you can go ahead and highlight all the games you want to copy over, right click, copy, close out of here. Now go into your MAME directory, find the ROMs directory within here, right click, and paste. And this is copying them directly to the USB drive. So at this point now, within our USB drive, we have the emulator and we have our games all set up. So we've done the hard part, thankfully. At this point now, we just need to exit out of here, right click, eject our USB drive, and take it over to the console. Back over at the console, go ahead, plug in your USB drive, make sure it is recognized. And once it is, you can go ahead, open up your file manager. If you're using Aurora, for example, press the back button, go to the file manager, Go to your USB drive, find your MAME directory, and then go ahead and launch the default executable. Now once you open it up, it should bring you to a black screen here, load up like that, and there you go. As you can see, that's pretty much all there is to it, which is really nice. Uh, there's not all too much you need to do here, as long as you put your games in the right section. They all end up looking pretty nice here, they have the metadata with them and everything. So in order to now utilize this, if there's a game that you're wanting to play, uh, really all you need to do is select the game and play it. But we'll go ahead and get into the options as well too here. If I want to play 1942, for example, you can highlight the game itself, tap the Y button here to bring up the options, and from here you have a few options that you can tweak, of course. Now, the shader is usually just set to a default, but if you want to change any of the shaders that you're using, for example, enable scan lines, you're welcome to do that. Sound is enabled by default, as is VSync, throttle frame rate, and the aspect ratio correction. If you do want to enable cheats, that is up to you on here, but the defaults have worked pretty well for me. Now if you press the back button, you can go back to the main menu here, and now to launch one of these games, if you haven't played games through MAME before, it's a little bit odd at first, but I'll show you how to do it. You can go ahead, find a game you want to play, tap the A button on it, it loads the game in, and then it should bring you to one of these screens right here. Once you agree to this here, in order to agree to it on the Xbox 360 controller, you're going to want to press right on the left stick. So I'll go ahead and do that here, sometimes it might take a bit. So there we go, was able to do that. And then once you get past that screen, you're going to come to an additional screen right here, which shows the specifications this game is going to run in. Uh, you can press any key, or you can just also press right again on the left stick. And once you do that here, congratulations, the game ROM has booted up, and you're now able to play it. Now remember, these are arcade games right here, but we don't have any way to insert coins, and it's not like a console game we're emulating where we can just go in and play. So in order to add credits, you can press the back button on your controller. Now when you do that, it's going to add a credit. You can see in the bottom right of this game here, I have one credit. So you can really just max it out by keeping... Well, it depends on what the maximum is going to be on every single game, but I think 31 credits is more than enough, and that will make the uh, arcade kid in me a little bit envious. So all you need to do is press the start button once you're ready to play, 
And once you have your credits loaded up and you are in game, that is pretty much it at this point. You should be good to go and you can continue playing your games. So congratulations, you now have your arcade ROMs playing on the system. Now this isn't just a matter of playing the games either, you also need to know the controls for MAME as well too. So if you want to exit out of this game here, at any point you can press start and back at the same time, the game will freeze and then it will boot you back to the MAME front end right here. This one is pretty easy. Now if you want to load up any other game, you find the game, tap the A button, do the exact same thing as before. If you run the game one time, you don't have to do that initial agreement, but we can press any key, and here we go, OutRun is able to load up. I'll throw in some credits because why not here? Now this game is working just the same as 1942, so all is well here, but there's also again some additional menus that you can tweak here. So one of the menus that you can tweak is by pressing in on the left thumbstick. Now I'm not going to be pausing this here, so I know I'm going to lose this race, but if you press in on the left thumbstick, you're going to bring this up in which there's going to be several different options that you can change kind of your on-screen display. So you have volume and you can change this by moving left and right. You could even use the D-pad as well too. Uh, so left and right to change that. But if you want to change other settings, you can press up and down. So gamma, brightness. Then you have some additional audio functionality here, such as the Sega PCM. That's right channel, left channel. You have another one right here as well too for right and left, and that's it. In order to get out of this menu here, you can press the left stick back in and it exits out back to your game. Now, if you want to access even more settings, you can press in on the right stick on your controller and it'll bring this up in which you can change the input here, which if you tap A on this, this is your input configuration menu. And there is a lot that you can change here and a lot that you can tweak. I'm not going to go through this entire menu here. I'm actually just going to skip this by coming back up to the top and going back to the main menu itself. But you can also change the input on the game itself too. So you have these options available, which you can tweak to your heart's content. I'm going to go back to the main menu. You have dip switches here, which you can change. So that is a fun thing that if you haven't gotten into an actual arcade cabinet, or if you haven't really looked into it before, you can go in and you can change a few of these options. So this is something fun that you might want to play around with here. But it would also probably help to look up some instructions on this as well too. Exiting out here, you can change the analog control settings. You can also check out the bookkeeping information, change that if needed. The game information here, this is what showed right at the beginning. Game history itself, if it is available, ours is not here. Finally, you can reset the game, and of course you can return to the game itself, which will exit you out of this. So you should be good. Wow, okay, it just does stop me right there. But all is fine there. Either way, let's go ahead and exit back out of this, and that's really all there is to it to using MAME. As you can see, it's made pretty easy, pretty simple here, and really the nice thing is once you get the controls down, which takes like a minute or two to figure out, you just need to put your games in the right folder and you're done at that point. So now if you want to actually get this transferred to your internal drive, like you don't want to keep it on the USB drive, I'll show you how to do that as well. For that, we can go ahead and bring up the guide, and let's exit out to home and bring Aurora back up. Now, just like I've shown before, if you want to transfer this over, you can press the back button in Aurora or whatever you're going to be using, go to your file manager, go to the USB drive, and go ahead and find where your emulator is. Now, if you haven't changed this until now, you can rename this if you want to by highlighting the folder, going to the rename option, and renaming this whatever you want to here. I'm just going to keep mine MAME360, but in order to move this, you just need to highlight this, move over to the left, go down to the either copy or cut option. I'm just going to copy this out, so I'm going to highlight this, tap A. You can see it's been copied out. Now tap the right bumper on your controller, go down to your hard drive, and in here, I'm going to add this to my emulators folder that I've created. You can see I already have a couple right here. You can put this wherever you want to. This is what makes sense to me, but you can navigate over to the left now, go down to paste, say A for that, say yes, and let it copy everything over. So now at this point, we have this on our internal drive, and once it's all been copied over, we no longer need that USB drive. So with that, I'm actually going to disconnect my USB drive so we can have it all on the system itself. Oh, and for what it's worth, if you get an error with a file copy over, if you check out your USB drive, you might notice here, it's probably going to be this text file here, and that's just due to it being such a long file name that it didn't copy over. If you check the actual install itself here, I'll go back to hard drive, emulators, and MAME, you 
would see it's not in here, but since we really can't use that text file on this console, it's fine if it's not copied over. Now this is another optional step, but the last thing we could do if we want to get it integrated into Aurora is, well, add it into Aurora. So if you have not done this before, you can hit the start button on your controller, go down to content, and wherever you save this to, you're going to want to add a path. You can see here that I already have an emulator's path, but if you have not added this in, you're going to go to manage paths, tap add, go to change, and you're going to find hard drive one, find your emulator's directory or wherever you saved your MAME 360 into, but we don't want to go into the directory. We can go back, highlight the directory itself, and tap the Y button on here to select it. Keep depth set to two, and then you can go ahead and save this. If you want to, you could also change the script data, but that is optional. However, I'm not going to be adding that in since I have it here already. Now, you all might notice I don't have auto scan enabled by default, so if it's already set by default, then your MAME 360 will probably be picked up. If not, you can go to scan now, wait a few moments here, and the nice thing is, if this is connected to your network, it's going to be able to find the new emulator that's been added on, then download a default piece of cover art, and there you go. Check it out, we do have this cover art right here. I think that looks nice, but if you want to change this as well, you can come down here to the preview option, navigate over to the left to download cover, tap the A button, and you can choose any of these other ones. I actually, you know, I like this one here, so I'll download it and let it get set up. But that is really all there is to it here in order to get the multiple arcade machine emulator up and running on your Xbox 360. As you can see, it's not all too difficult to do. It gives you even more accessibility on your console to really play not even other consoles. I was about to say you can just play arcade cabinets and arcade games and arcade boards on here, which is really cool. But if you can do something like this within a few steps to get even more usage out of your Xbox 360, that's always awesome in my opinion. Either way, that is about it for this video here. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.